welcome back to yet another video from Tony's tutorial and in this video we are going to discuss about the wrist complex biomechanics function of the wrist complex biomechanics in particular sometimes it's so nice to scroll the comment box and find out some very interesting and enthusiastic comments because some of you are asking not the ones that appreciate me I'm very thankful for that at the same time what I'm specifically mentioning here is some things uh, some doubts which you ask which uh, sometimes to be frank make me think uh, at 30 minutes or one hour to answer it or even to take back the reference book and just refer back to answer that and if you are someone who thinks a lot in biomechanics and if you're someone who likes to think a lot with biomechanics today's topic is the right cup of tea for you and it is going to fire your brain a lot but as my duty over here and my aim over here is to simplify the things that so that everyone understand we will be simplifying one of the most difficult concept in the hand and wrist complex or in the entire biomechanics in the most simplified and beautiful manner and if you feel i have just skipped off some important concept or some difficult points just approach me in person so that we, so we will solve it one by one not over in this public platform and sometimes after discussing this concept and getting thorough with this concept, we may discuss this uh, in detail in future. So let us now first understand the basic concept about wrist complex biomechanic function. in the wrist complex biomechanics before going into depth I need you to remember the few important points that wrist complex is made up of radiocarpal joint and the second joint is what the mid carpal joint right the radiocarpal and the mid carpal joint forms the wrist complex and you know that the functional union between the radius and the carpal boards of course the triangle fibrocartilage also is known as the radiocarpal joint and here between the carpal bones we have the mid carpal bone now that was individualized discussion about the radiocarpal and mid carpal joint now we are going to group it together to a single system known as the wrist complex so we won't be discussing about radiocarpal or midcarpal joint but we will be discussing the function in the wrist complex as a total and the function in individual radiocarpal or midcarpal joint was discussed in the previous video right and here uh, so we forget uh, just forget about the radiocarpal midcarpal concept just think about uh, what is the structures over here we have this structure one of the row is made by the radius and the radio nut disc etc okay the second row is made up of what the carpal bones first row of the carpal bones and third row is made up of the third row of the carpal bones that means there is a consequence uh, consecutive three rows over here one two and three that makes this concept a link segment of uh, three different items. Uh, that makes this a three segment model. That is what I want to give you first. That we will be discussing this as a three segment model. Okay, these are the three different segments. First one is formed by your radius and ulnar disc etc. The second segment is made up of the proximal carpal row. Of course, you know that the carpals can be divided into proximal row and the distal row. And the second, third row will be formed by the distal carpal row. So, when we an analyze the wrist complex biomechanics as a whole, we need to understand that the wrist act as a three segment model let me draw let me draw the horizontal view which is uh, uh, how our wrist is arranged so here you have the radius and the structures forming the first row then immediately here you have the scaffold lunar trichodrum the second row and here you have the third row so we develop a three segment model we develop a three segment model to understand this concept okay now let me just take, uh, take forward your idea to an imaginary situation. This is just my visiting card. 
and uh, I am dividing it into three segments if uh, anybody is having a card with you not your ATM card any other cards okay just fold it into three segments okay now we have got actually what three segments okay this can be the radius and the first segment this is the proximal segment this is the distal segment now before bending this imagine this is the same card itself it is made up of three segments and i can just uh, draw three lines to represent that first one uh, second one instead of uh, bending it so this is the first row this is the second row and this is the third one okay now when a force is exerted into this uh, segment let me keep it like this for you to get it uh, to understand this one to see it visualize this so see this one when a force is applied a compressive force is applied to the segment can you predict the movement the direction of movement of three of the segments the first segment is moving towards my body the second segment is moving towards my body what happens to the third the second segment first and third is moving to one direction whereas the second segment moves in the opposite segment direction throw so in a three segment model what happens is that when the middle segment not when the middle segment in fact moves in a direction that is opposite to the first and last segment see this one the middle segment is in fact moving to a direction that is opposite to the first and last segment am i right so that is what happens in a three segment model and here in our arm also we have the three segment model so in during the arm motion what should actually happen is that when there is a wrist extension happening when there is such a movement happening the distal row of the carpels okay capitate hamate trapezium trapezoid okay that one should move in one direction the radius and the carpal should also move in that direction whereas this row the second row made up of scaffold lunate and trichotum should actually move in the opposite direction that means your proximal carpal row act as an intercalated segment what is that the proximal carpal row act as an intercalated segment is that clear yes uh, i'm just simplifying it so that you understand it in the most easiest manner so if you just take an example of a card if there is a three segment model three segments means three items or three sub components are linked together okay if it is just that card itself that is just a one segment no it is actually made up of three components in such a system what actually happens is that when a compressive force or a force is applied to that two segments will work in the same direction whereas the second segment will go for in the opposite direction okay for example our finger can be considered as a three segment mode i just got this idea now okay so the middle segment is this one that is a middle interphalange joint the distal interphalange proximal interphalange joint for example you see that i'm going for to flex my finger see what is happening this distal is going for flexion proximal is going for flexion but middle one is going upwards that is the opposite direction so in an intercalated segment or in three segmented model the middle segment always moves in an opposite direction should move in an opposite direction to the other one so in our human wrist complex the middle segment is the proximal carpal row which one is that the proximal carpal row so the proximal carpal row tend to collapse when there is some motion in the wrist complex am i right so the proximal carpal row tend to collapse it may move downwards okay it moves downwards it tends to collapse it do not work with the other ones it tends to collapse when there is movement in the wrist complex now that is one concept that should be the way it should be, it is working but it is not the way it is going to work that is because if that segment is going to collapse like this for example if this is just going to drop it downwards can we perform the function in the better manner of course no because this is linked together this there can be a range of motion restriction with this with if this is going to be excessively collapsed so there is a need of some mechanism
there is a need of some compensatory mechanism which should balance the collapse of the middle carpal row the proximal carpal row which act as the intercalated segment so there should be some mechanism which should balance the excessive of the intercalated segment or the proximal carpal row in wrist complex function so who is doing that what how is that done let us explore okay that function is purely done by your scaphoid bone what is that your scaphoid bone that function is purely done by your scaphoid bone not just the scaphoid but its interaction between interaction between other segments its interaction between other segments how is it done it's not just by the scaphoid but is by the interaction of the scaphoid to the other segments of the wrist which includes the lunate the triquatrum the distal carpal row etc let us explore how it is done yes, how scaphoid is going to do this function so uh, the way scaphoid is going to do this function is like uh, in two methods okay in two methods one is that the scaphoid tends to flex i'll explain that okay no need to worry whereas the um, what is that the lunate and trigotrum lunate and trigotrum tends to extend okay lunate and trigotrum tend to extend so i want to tell you that even though we saw that the proximal carpal segment is uh, getting a uh, collapsed that changes may not be the same between the proximal carpal segment because here this was just one segment but what is the uh, ideology what is the real picture in the hand it is actually made up of scaffold lunate and trichotum three segments are there so when it is collapsing they may not collapse together if they are going to collapse together it may ultimately limit the amount of total collapse that is happening because the segment is connected to the distal and the carpal ones okay so the aim should be that there should be a synchronization in this collapsation if so the ligamentous connection and other associated muscles and other connections can stabilize this one so how is it done but in fact in real picture the scaphoid is going to be flexed whereas your lunate is uh, and the trichotrum is going to be extended the lunate and trichotrum is going to be extended okay now this is going to be a problem this is not to be allowed if this is done it should it will work individually not in a synchronized manner so to prevent that we have the ligaments what is that the scaphoid ligament we studied that okay we studied that scaphoid interosseous ligament and here we have luno trichotron in interosseous ligament so these two ligaments will they are interosseous ligaments attaching the bones different surface of the bone so this interosseous ligaments will pull together the scaffold and lunate and trichotrum and make them collapse in a synchronized manner so the collapse according to one discussion happens to be in a synchronized manner which should not happen because these are three individual bones with various functional dissimilarities i should say sim dissimilarity because the shape of scaffold is both lunate is a semi lunar like like that they are not similar so they might collapse differently so that is being prevented by this uh, ligaments okay that is just one idea that the ligaments on the ligamentous connection as well as the scaphoid's anatomical peculiarity is making the joint collapse as a rigid segment or a complete uh, synchronized collapse which in fact due to the various extensive ligamentous supports and various um, soft tissue and the capsule surrounding ultimately will help this one to be controlled so you just imagine this situation uh, i'm just uh, this is that uh, uh, same intercalated segment sorry three segment model now i am going to collapse this one okay this is getting collapsed but this collapse is regulated over here you can see that it is not going like this 
okay it won't go like in that manner it won't project superiorly that is because this is a single segment but if it is actually three segments it may just go in this direction it may just go in this direction something or like that okay it may go in different directions it may just become like that so that this segment will never have its stability so this ligaments are actually pulling or uh, connecting that segments together so that this three segments over here this scaffold lunate and tricotum works together and when it is working together when there is rigidity over here there is ultimate stability at the both other end points so that synchronization is enabling the uh, collapse to be regulated but as I told you, I am simplifying the facts. In reality, and as per the latest studies, we see that the scaffold is working its own. It's not going to work with the lunate. It's not going to work with the trichotrum. The lunate is going to work with its own, and the trichotrum is going to work. This was an earlier concept, but this is something that helped us to uh, answer our doubts and the things. Because if we go on with this one, we may not understand how the carpels and the mid-carpel row is going to work. It's not, it's going to be a lot hectic task in understanding that concept. So just remember that this is not the perfect concept. Still, this is something that we can rely on to understand the things. And at the same time, remember the scaffold, lunate and trichotrum are individual bonds and they can have individualized motion in wrist flexion, extension, radial deviation, ulnar deviation. Also, it differs in its function. When wrist is extended from its flexed position, scaffold may behave in one manner. When it is ex from extended position to flexed position, scaffold may behave in another manner. So that such changes can happen. Okay, right? And always remember, in the wrist complex discussion, we take the capitate bond, okay, as the axis or the center of our discussion. Because we need a center of po center point or a center axis through which all the motions should be described. So for that and to the arch-like shape of the carpels, uh, this uh, center segment that is the uh, capitate works to be a mechanical uh, center of that disc. The center of the capitate as the keystone of the wrist complex. They might ask you somewhere in MCQ which segment is considered, which bone is considered as the center of the wrist complex or keystone of the wrist complex that is your capitate. That's just for you to understand. Just remember that one. And now we straight away move on to what is the function in the wrist complex? How flexion extension is happening? How radial deviation and deviation is happening? Before this, how, uh, why this discussion uh, is important or what is the reason or logic behind all this discussion is that the peculiarity of the carpal bonds, exceptionally, especially the proximal row, because all the muscles are actually passing to the radius or to the metacarpals. None of the muscles are in fact concentrated on the proximal row. In fact, all muscles are passing through them. It acts just as a passage. So the movement cannot be produced by the muscle. So that is why we need to consider this as an intercalated segment. It should happen as a relative motion of the other bones or this proximal row of the carpal scaphoid lunate trichotrum depends on the other carpals for their motion. Other motions of the carpals and radial uh, head and the uh, radial joints in fact produce motion in the proximal row that is because there is no pure in fact muscle insertion into that segment of course you might ask me what about the flexor carpial nariis the flexor carpial nariis passes on to the pisiform and from the pisiform the force is actually directed to the other carpal bonds not the proximal segment so let us discuss about the okay, now we are going to understand how flexion and extension is going to happen remember we are going to understand this with the help of a few steps it would be a step by step process before that i would like to say that even though we understood that the carpal row the proximal carpal row should work synchronized later study shows that it is working individually so remember that in your mind but how far it is going to work individually we don't know now uh, when there is a wrist flexion and extension we arrive at a conclusion or we know one important statement that the scaffold is the most movable one scaffold is the most movable segment movable uh, born okay of course some of them uh, doubt on it or contradict this one but for the time being scaffold is the most movable bond 
Now, the process that we are going to discuss is the wrist extension. So from this completely flexed position, you can see that this is the completely flexed position. Our wrist shouldn't go for extension, which is this one. Now, it is a step by process, step by step process, which happens in three steps. So the first statement is step is that when wrist is in full flexion, the extensor muscles gets activated so that this extensor muscle will produce an extension moment or gets activated. That's enough. No need to go for the moment, etc. It gets activated. And when extensors are getting activated, this muscle is passing directly to the metacarpal and the proximal carpal row. Sorry, distal carpal row, not to the center one, not to the scaffold in one edge. So what will happen is that this will pull the proximal carpal row. Sorry, the distal carpal row. Always it's coming proximal. It's a distal carpal row and the metacarpals. It will pull the pro, uh, distal carpal row and the metacarpals. So what happens is that this distal carpal row will get pulled in this direction. Will get pulled in which direction? This direction. That is in the extension direction. Same direction as that of extension. It gets pulled. So this uh, distal carpal row gets a uh, pulled. Okay. When distal carpal row is getting pulled, this is uh, lunate, uh, scaffold, lunate, triquadrum, and this all are remaining as a fixed segment. So at that time, this fixed carpal segments will make the distal carpal row to, of course, have a gliding movement. And which direction would it glide? Will it glide in this direction or this direction? Mm -hmm. That movement is in that direction. So it will direct glide in the that direction, dorsal aspect. This is the dorsum okay or posterior aspect don't consider this as anterior this is the anterior aspect in uh, anatomical position okay so it will consider it will glide in the posterior direction so the muscles get activated in the first step step one is it the muscles get activated it pulls the distal carpal row distal carpal row and the metacarpals distal carpal glow glides which direction is that it glides in the posterior direction so this steps is going to happen up to the neutral position, up to the neutral position. So ultimately our wrist reached in this neutral position. Now when it reaches the neutral position, until then the lunate, triquadrant, trapezium, everything will be sitting silent. At this time the scaffold will say, I am the most mobile one, you don't have to go alone, I'm going to come with you. Okay, the scaffold actually moves with the distal row. Why? That is because the capitate and the scaffold are linked and all that ligaments which link the capitate and the scaffold pulls them together so that the capitate and the hamate which was separate segments like this separate segments like this okay gets pulled and becomes a crossed back position. What is the peculiarity of the cross back position? If it is in cross back position, the movement will be in both the bones. Not one bone alone cannot move. So the scaffold will do the trick so that it gets combined with the capitate over here. It gets combined with the uh, capitate over there and they works as a closed back position. So from the neutral, if the wrist extension is going to happen, this one has to take the scaffold with it. That is what I marked as the second position. So this is the first motion. That is the motion of distal carpal row. The second motion is the motion of scaffold. The scaffold will move in that direction, posterior movement, along with that one, along with the wrist complex, along with the distal carpal row and the metacarpal. So in the second phase, the scaffold moves. Okay, first phase it was the distal row around when it reached the neutral, the scaffold and capitate becomes a tight because of in the close pack position of the ligament because of the ligaments, etc. And scaffold moves with it. Now, if it is moving ahead, that is in the neutral position, it is done. If it reaches about 45 degrees of extension, okay, neutral scaffold starts moving. Now, scaffold and everything is moving, uh, it reaches up to 45 degrees of extension. Now, the scaffold is having a link to the lunate through scaphoid lunate tricotral scaphoid lunate interosseous ligament. Lunate is related to the trichotrum. So, what happens is that after 45 degree or at 45 degree, the scaffold and lunate is pulled together in the close back position because the ligament becomes taut. So, that from 45 degree, what happens? The third segment that is the lunate also moves with them. Lunate means the proximal carpal row also moves. And ultimately, 
extension is achieved when extension is achieved all the proximal row and distal row moves on the fixed radius and the triangular fibrocartilage okay am i clear should i tell it again once again that's a simple concept actually this is not as difficult as we imagined right so initially during the first degrees of motion uh, the muscles are pulling the capitate alone or the distal row alone so the distal row glides posteriorly and it reaches the neutral position now scaffold and the capitate become tight or closed back because of the ligament so the scaffold moves with it from the second phase now at 45 degree lunate and scaffold become stored and lunar tricorder scaffold ligaments and lunar tricorder ligament makes the lunate to move with it and ultimately after 45 degree entire proximal row moves with the distal row and the metacarpals and ultimately at complete extension what is happening is that the distal carpal row the proximal carpal row and the metacarpals together moves on the fixed radial end okay that's how the extension is being achieved that is how extension is being achieved that means a three segmented or a, a consecutive step by step process okay now what about from uh, extension to flexion okay uh, fully extended position to flexion now into the exact opposite so here earlier the in the previous model or previous discussion it was the distal row moving so here it is already in the closed back position and movement cannot be initiated unless the capitate and scaffold sorry what is that unless the capitate or scaffold or capitate and ham scaffold moves so that uh, when flexion is initiated the first degree is the movement of scaffold or capitate or scaffold and capitate as together and it reaches the neutral position now the lunate comes into action the scaffold and lunate comes into action okay scaffold and capitate moved earlier now the lunate comes into action and the end position the scaffold lunate and tricotum everything moves on the fixed radius segment that this segment is fixed and this segment as a core as it moves together so that is what happens when uh, from full extension to full flexion full extension flexion to extension first segment or first movement was the movement of distal carpal row alone but in this segment it is already in its closed back position so movement cannot happen so the movement should be of the scaffold or the capitate or scaffold low capitate together so in the a second model that is from extension to flexion scaffold is acted from the step, step one itself so scaffold acts in step one so if a scaffold is acting in step one definitely lunate will act on the second one and everything will act on the third one and that is how flexion and extension is done in the wrist complex with this we wind up this section let me know how interesting was the session or if it was tough to understand one okay and in next video we'll discuss about the rest of the functions in the wrist complex but tomorrow's video will be on shoulder complex biomechanics until then stay tuned and if you like the video don't forget to click the like button and kindly subscribe to